Good afternoon and welcome to the Chartreuse Leprechaun. My name is Mark, your host, and today we're going to be playing a random game called Aim Lab. Now, a couple of things on the front end and then we'll get into this. First of all, my wife is a cake decorator, an award-winning cake decorator, no less. And here's a couple of pictures of her cakes while I talk about this. She is amazing. And... And what she does, she is amazing. She's nearly totally self-taught, too. And the whole COVID thing really screwed up her business, though. She'll be rebuilding almost from scratch as restrictions lift and people start moving back to some semblance of normal. Uh, anyway, right now she is downstairs working on a wedding cake. And for our purposes, that means I'm upstairs staying out of the way. It also means there may be some random noises and shouting and... I don't know what, so yeah, consider that fair warning. Now, I know we started a series last Monday of Besieged, and oh my god, that game is so much fun. I really wish I had found it sooner, I really do. But even with that series in the works, I've decided to continue just doing random games on Saturdays for a while, for um, reasons. Yeah, reasons. No particular reasons, just reasons. For how long? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I'm actually thinking of just using Saturdays for uh, continuing to use Saturdays for random games and only doing Leprechaun stories on Wednesdays as teaser for our Friday series. So we'll still be doing a series on Mondays. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think of that idea in the comments. Uh, anyway, my ability to shoot bad guys or really any target uh, is terrible, to put it nicely. Doesn't matter what game we're talking about. Uh, you've all seen my stellar shooting performance in Fallout 4, and you all saw how much trouble I had lining up the laser cutter in Shipbreaker, Hard Space Shipbreaker, and you know how much trouble I had lining up shots to, to shoot the spear gun and throw spears and whatnot at sharks and other critters in Stranded Deep. Uh, best description I have is I have trouble hitting the broadside of the barn from the inside. Well, this free-to-play game on Steam will hopefully help with that. Aim Lab goes through different aspects of shooting in video games, measures performance, and even makes suggestions on how to improve. So we're going to go into the training section, and we'll see what we can do. Now, I played through the tutorial just uh, just so I could... Uh, favorites? Yeah, we'll leave that where it is. You have... Like I said, it makes suggestions. So here's suggested training task to improve my shooting, which is really cool. Uh, we're going to do a couple of them right here, just so you can see how this thing works. Uh, I think this would be good for anybody in video games. I, I remember a while back hearing about this. Uh, by the way, it tells you when you first get into it that this is very, very, it actually says very, very early access. It says, also says it's like 51% complete. I like that they're upfront about that, that there's still a lot of, of change and development and whatnot that goes into this. Uh, we'll talk about some of the stuff I like, some of the stuff I don't like in terms of the game as we go along. But let me show you how this works. So we'll take a look at Grid Shot uh, Mode Ultimate. I don't know what that means, and it's not explained, which is one of the things I don't like, but uh, more on that later. Okay, so here's what it does. It puts up um, a, three spheres at a time, and you have to shoot the spheres. Uh, so, any key to continue, and here we go. Click to begin. Get a counter. Yeah, you get a minute of targets, and you just got to keep hitting the targets. So, just keep shooting for a minute, and... Okay, so, it says my accuracy is 96%, which I absolutely adore. Oh, look, we imp I improved. This is good. My kill total was 30%. I don't know what that means. Does that mean of the absolute possible targets that it's willing to throw up? Does that mean that I somehow, in all of that, left 7 out of 10 of those spheres unshot? 
Uh, it doesn't make any sense. Time to kill is 29%. I don't know what that means. Where is that number coming from? This is one of the things I don't like about the game. It doesn't tell you what this number means. For example, time to kill. It's putting up three spheres, and they can be all over your grid, your, your shooting area. Well, one of the problems is if I'm in the field uh, and I'm shooting, uh, I don't care if it's ski targets. I don't care if it's uh, uh, birds. I've been dove hunting, so uh, I don't care if it's uh, on a range. If and we'll use the uh, we'll use the game thing with bad guys. Let's say on my left there's a bad guy behind a, a rock, and roughly center there's a bad guy behind a tree that I'm closer to. So and they pop up at the same time. I'm going to shoot the guy behind the tree. Now, what I think the game is measuring is to come back over and shoot the guy behind the rock. But if it's next, if the next sphere that pops up is on the opposite side of the tree because I'm already lined up there, I'm going to shoot that, which then takes down my time to kill because I left the guy behind the rock. So if that's what it's doing, I'd love to know that. Because that, that gives me something that says, okay, time to kill is terrible. 29% as opposed to 100% is bad. But here's why. I'd like to know that. It doesn't tell you, which kind of ticks me off. Kills per second is 30%. Really? Uh, anyway, you get the idea. There's some good information here. It tells you a lot of good things. Uh, congratulations. Your score is up. Okay, that's nice. Uh, accuracy over the last plays. My average is going up. That's good. Uh, your time to kill was 110 better than your average. 567. Oh, wow. I was like 700 the first time I went through here. So that's pretty good. Targets was 17 better than your average. Okay. So I shot more targets. Nice. Anyway, you get the idea. It gives you a lot of good information and then it gives you insights. So I have right-sided weakness. Really? Interesting, because the the first time I played this, it actually identified things that are correctly problems that I've had. For uh, And we talked about that uh, that problem with what does the number mean? Well, this is now saying I've got problems to the right, which is actually a good thing, uh, because I normally have problems to the left. And that's because I have peripheral vision problems from a small stroke I suffered in 2010. So it, it, it identified it correctly. I'm, I'm, it's nice to see that after just a few playthroughs, I've actually improved on that. But this game actually picked up on that. It accurately identified problem areas, and now it's showing strength based on repeated play, which I like. That's a good thing. It says that no matter what the metric is, it averages it out so you can see if you're getting better, but it doesn't explain what better is. Yeah, like I said, it identifies problems. Now, I was talking about left-sided stuff. I have peripheral vision problems on the left, and they're bad. They're, they're really bad. Uh, it also I also have a response lag time, which apparently is getting better because it's not showing up on this list now. That I like. Like I said, they're all due to that stroke. Now, if you have a brain injury, I don't care what it is. It could be a concussion. It could be PTSD. It could be a stroke. Uh, it could be whatever it is. You're going to have some issues. One of them that always crops up is response lag time. It's it's going to affect you in speech, in your actions, in your thoughts. It just is. Uh, you you lag behind. My wife will tell you it's a thing. Oh, I'm bad. I'm <laughs> really bad. She'll ask a question, and it could be minutes before I answer, and she and everybody else wonders if I actually heard her which sometimes I don't because I do have some hearing loss. Part of that's the stroke. Part of that I earned. Uh, a couple of years on a uh, on a jet engine flight line, uh, lots of years in bars with loud music uh, and no hearing protection, uh, several years of hunting as a, as a teenager with no hearing protection because, you know, in the 70s, hearing protection wasn't a thing. Uh, anyway, the, the, the peripheral vision on the left is terrible. And this test was six or seven years ago. It has improved since then, but it will never fully resolve. And it's due to the damaged nerves. I don't know. I didn't know if this game would help with that, but it seems to, which is cool. Uh, it's helping me. 
I guess, hyper focus to the left. Uh, and hopefully that doesn't trigger, because many times hyper focus like that will trigger the hemiplegic migraines, which is another thing that's cropped up since that stroke. So what I really like is the it makes suggestions on what you can do better, uh, how you can uh, how you can improve. Yeah, I like that. That's a that's a good thing. Uh, and then we have the advanced board that tracks what you're doing. This is where you're shooting better. This is where you're shooting worse, and so on and so forth. So it's really cool. I like it. Uh, here's the trend. Time to kill is getting lower. Accuracy's yeah, roughly improved. You can see how bad this is when you look at the results. The score is 23%, 30%. My accuracy is always my accuracy's always been high. Uh, when I was in the Air Force. In basic training, I shot 392 on the 400-point military range. Uh, later, I was in the 380s, uh, but I shot 48 out of 50 on a skeet range. I won a 410 single-shot break open shooting trap. I mean, if it was in range and you gave me a long gun, it was either dead or wishing it was dead. Pistols, not so much. I do better with pistols in games than I have ever done with pistols in person. Uh, yeah, it's just a thing. My accuracy is awesome. Uh, my time to target and all of that, eh, maybe not so much. Yeah, this game is telling me all of that. It's confirming all of that's a real thing. I like that. That's pretty cool. Yep, and I'm sniper alert. Okay, boom, headshot. Right-sided weakness. Yeah, okay. It's interesting that it's right-sided when, when left side is the big problem. So, I like it. This is actually really cool. There is a lot to this game. So these are suggested training tasks, things I can do to improve whatever is going on. Uh, spear track, as I recall, I was terrible at that. Oh, no, that wasn't the game I was playing. That, what's, oh, strafe track, that was the one. Let's take a look at that one real quick. Strafe track. Here's a drill that every FPS player needs to do that you normally don't get in deathmatch. The life bar of the target will deplete so long as you have your crosshair on them and they light up blue. This will be the bread and butter of a lot of different games and weapon types. For example, being a tracer main and having to track targets in short bursts, or if you're playing PUBG and you've got to follow someone across a field looking for a clean shot that's also safe. In fact, you can throw it on countryside for that exact vibe. If your sensitivity is too low, you'll find it difficult to adjust to the next ball. And if it's too high, you'll have trouble keeping it on the ball. In this way, it's a good litmus test to see if you've got about the right sensitivity for you. Weapon doesn't matter, but if you find your mouse drifting off the ball, consider repositioning your mouse and your hand to be more comfortable. This exercise will improve focus and reaction times so long as you keep that ball blue. Okay, so that's a pretty good description of what's going on and why it's a good exercise, especially for somebody like me. So I think that's really cool. All right, so click to begin. Now, all you're doing in this is keeping your crosshair on whatever your target is so that, that it stays blue and the meter goes to zero. Yeah, you can see that this is not one of my strong suits. Interesting that it's staying close in because it was going at different distances, as I recall, the first time I played it. This is interesting. Part of the jerkiness is me, and part of it is my mouse pad has completely lost its ability to let me, uh, come on, come on, there we go. Ah, completely lost its sticks. I don't know how else to describe that. Ah, score average on time was 30%, accuracy 33%, oh, terrible. This section will tell you how much you've improved based on your past sessions. Welcome to Aim Lab. So I didn't play this one before. I thought that was the one I played. Uh, insights. Poor tracking. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, strafe track, strafe shot, circle shot, circle track, free track, interesting task suggestions. This gives you an error. This tells you your error bias. Where are you having your most problems? 
Well, I'm pretty much across the board. That's how bad it is. So, yeah, average time on target, 150 milliseconds. That has no meaning. Where is that number coming from? I don't know. I'm purely guessing. Accuracy, 33%? That high? Really? I wouldn't have thought so, but all right. Uh, anyway, you get the idea. This is a really cool and useful game. We're not going to replay that task. We'll come in here. And what else can we do? Spider shot. I don't remember that one. I uh, include in, at that improved spatial performance. That's cool. 360 enemy tracking. 360. Nice. Strafe track. I did play that one. That is interesting. Uh, sphere track. Which one was that? Oh, that's the 360. This one, it's interesting that it's not putting up all of the different games that are possible. Or, uh, uh, not games, modes that it has. Because th some of these I did not play in the tutorial, which I thought was interesting. Playlist? I haven't really explored this whole thing. Spider shot, line track, micro shot. That was one I've done. Oh, this is where all of them are. Okay, so flicking, tracking, speed. There's different ones you can get into for, for just different stuff. So perception, sandbox, miscellaneous, AI, scenar scenarios. Ooh, ascent. So it will give you motion ranges. It will give you all kinds of stuff. That's cool. So, yeah, there's a lot in this thing that it's it's honestly amazing. So there's tracking, there's speed. Uh, what have I done in here? I did mostly flicking before. Micro shot, motion shot, grid shot I've played. Uh, that was the one we did earlier. Micro shot. That's the one. How do I replay it? I don't know. Play. There we go. It's right mouse grip. Here's a test where I want you to speed it up. Receding into a more claw style grip may be natural for your fingers. That's perfectly okay. This will be a real wrist and finger focused exercise. Focus on target volume here. Trust yourself and test how comfortable your grip is by flicking and clicking quickly. As quickly as possible, in fact. Muscle memory will be a factor, but what we want to know is can you stay in control of your mouse if your mouse is constantly moving? This will be a real test of focus, so try not to get obsessed with misses because there will be a lot of targets. Remember, although this is just practice, if you practice differently than you play, you will not feel comfortable in ranked matches. Keep the chair placement, keyboard, mouse placement all like you would in a match, and maybe blink a few times before we begin. You aren't going to get many chances once the timer starts. And there you go. That's what this one is. And it's really kind of cool. Uh, it is basically a speed shot. And you get shot, you get targets at different ranges, different, uh, different sizes. Well, technically the same size target, but at distance, of course, it appears smaller, which is kind of cool. So press any key. Let's see what this one does and what we get for metrics. Oh man. Oh boy. Yeah, you can see how this really is a workout for somebody like me with a brain injury. Or really anyone. But you can also see how this is a great, great training exercise. Oh yeah, there's a time amount that you have to hit the target. 88% accuracy. Okay, I like that. Score was 24%. Kills total was 16%. Targets 17%. Both undefined. I don't really. They're. I guess they're telling me the same thing. I don't honestly know. Um. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty cool. So 88%. Time to kill is 710. Insights. Upper screen weakness. Uh. Hypometria, slow hand, so my reaction time. Basically, what I'm seeing and what my hand is reacting to are not the same. That's really what that's telling me. 
and upper screen weakness is where I have the most trouble trying to reach forward to try and get the mouse to go up. Hypermetria, I miss low, uh, which fits with upper screen weakness. Even on the low screen, I'm going to miss below the target, not above it. Uh, which, by the way, is almost completely reversed from how I used to shoot with rifles and shotguns. If I missed, it was high, which was strange. So shooting body mass, I got headshots. It wasn't exactly like that, but yeah, okay, advanced. So we'll come here and we'll see that, uh, okay. And to kill, I thought I, I know I played Microshot in the thing, but it's not showing the numbers there. All right, well, whatever. 84 targets, 80 hits, 10 misses. 84 targets, 80 hits. So I missed four targets. Yeah, that's one of the other things. They were, were only up there for like a couple of seconds and then they disappeared. So that tells me four guys could have killed me. Yeah, and I missed 10 times shooting at other stuff, which hopefully means the bad guys kept their head down so that I could shoot them with the second shot. You get the idea. This is a cool game. I like it. I like everything about it because it identifies real problems and comes up with ways to improve them, which clearly I've done in a couple of areas, which I like. That's a cool deal. Now, I'm playing offline, meaning just at Steam, I think. Uh, it's an EA game, I believe, so you can log in, which I didn't do. And I like it. I like it a lot. This is a cool game. And I, yeah, I'm highly recommending this thing because it's got some accurate stuff to it. It's, it, and you've clearly seen it help me improve. So it will actually improve your game, which is even better. That's, uh, that's cool. So anyway, I think we're going to call this an episode. It's a really short one, which the random games are probably going to be somewhere between 15 and 30 minutes. Uh, just a quick Saturday, let's waste some time thing. Uh, but I want to thank you for your time today. Your time is valuable. You chose to spend it with us here at the Chartreuse Leprechaun, and we are very grateful. We'd love to hear from you. So leave us a comment. Let us know what you like, what you don't like, what you think, what you want to see, game ideas, all of that. We want to get better, and it takes input from you, so please let us know. Drop us a comment. And also, please subscribe and set yourself up for notifications so you don't miss any of the, the stuff around here. And uh, also, please check out our merch page. But with that, I will let you go. But always, always, always remember, if you see it, and you can't quite explain it, you can be sure the Leprechaun did it. Now you have yourselves a great day, a great week, and we will see you here next time on the Chartreuse Leprechaun. Bye-bye.